Well, then we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Stuart with SAI. And once again, just want to say welcome to today's NROUTE webinar. Uh, today, our presenter will be Aaron Clapp. And as many of you probably know, Aaron has been working with NROUTE for many years. And now he is in charge of all our training with NROUTE and Flexi. And so today, he'll be talking about how you can use layers in NROUTE. And we'll have a 20, 25 minute presentation on, on layering. And then we'll open it up for a question and answer session. So if you do have any questions, uh, if you think of them during the webinar, go ahead and type them into the chat window there. And we'll get to those after that. And then Aaron will answer as many of those as we can. And just as a general note, we will be recording today's webinar. And we'll post that on our YouTube channel. So if you have to step out partway through, or if you want to know if you can view this later or send it to someone, we will be sending everyone a link to the recording. And I think that's just about everything. So we'll go ahead and turn it over to you, Aaron. All right, sounds good. All right, so let's get started with some basics here. Um, in NROUTE, uh, sometimes your layers don't always show up. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that they're all turned on. Uh, typically, you might see a blank spot um, right uh, up in this corner up in here. Uh, if you see that there, you don't. it probably means that you don't have the, the, the layers turned on. Uh, easiest way is just to go to your Setup menu go to toolbars, and then turn on layers. Another thing that we're going to be using is this little toolbar up here. Um, it has three little buttons in here that we're going to be using for layers. This one is usually on by default, but this one sometimes is not. Uh, this one here, uh, just to go over these real quick, this just allows us to toggle through different layers that we have uh, that we've created by either selecting them or kind of toggling through them like this. Or if we need to see all the layers at once, you will probably see me click this uh, on and off uh, multiple times so that if I have something drawn, let's say we draw a square in one of these nested layers, um, and then I go back to my original layer, if I turn this on or off, that'll show me what's on what those layers. So you'll see me kind of clicking through that several times. Uh, just to kind of get a perspective of where we're at sometimes. So that's that part of it. And then let's just open up our layer. So F7 is the quick uh, hot key for that. Um, or you can click on this button here, and it'll pull up your nested layers. Um, at the top here, we can sort through uh, our layers, whether they're all, uh, whether we want to show all layers, all the layers that are on, all the layers that are off, locked, or ones with data. So the ones with data are used as something with some kind of drawing in it. I typically just like to see all my layers at once, whether they have something or not. So I'm just going to leave it at all layers. I'm going to get rid of some of these. So the first thing I guess we can talk about is adding and removing layers. Um, I've got a couple nested layers that I was playing around with earlier today. So I can remove uh, the selected layer just by clicking the check mark and then coming over here and hitting delete. Um, in this case, I drew that square in this layer. So it does give me a message saying that this is not an empty layer. And I'm going to say, yeah, go ahead and delete it anyway. I'm going to click this one and delete this one. Uh, I can also add layers in the same way uh, just by hitting the new button up here. It's going to create a new layer. And uh, it automatically puts it at the bottom. Now, I can rename these layers. Um, in fact, that's probably what I'm going to do. I've got this nested layer here. I'm just going to go ahead and rename this to layer two, just so that we have a, a layer there. So um, we're going to play around with moving some, some stuff around. But if I have multiple layers, so let's say I have a ton of different layers, I can grab one of my layers and uh, move these down if I want to, or move them up in the in the chain. So this is going to be kind of handy if you need to stack certain things on top of each other. Um, it'll also be handy when we talk about 
uh, how to use layers for tool pathing and output. Um, you may want to move certain things down the list uh, depending on their importance in terms of what you'd want a tool path and what layers you want a tool path or, or output first for the machine to cut later on down the road. Um, we can turn on or off different layers. So I can have uh, multiple layers here that are off. So I know that there's nothing on all these layers. I can come in here and uh, I guess you can't turn off your current layer, but uh, I can turn off all the layers. So when I go to hit OK, if I had anything on layers 3, 4, and 5, those layers would disappear, and it would only show me the things that are in layers 1 and 2. Pull this back up here. This is kind of an interesting one here, the color. Um, I'm never a fan of changing the color, but uh, that's just me. I always like my design and my artwork to always be in black, but um, you may want to change the layer color to something else. Um, you can double click on the color over here, and we can change the uh, color to whatever we want it to be. So I could be lime green, or I can do red, and my artwork, oops, I think I hit cancel. That's another no-no, by the way. I do this a lot. I accidentally hit cancel, and uh, if you, anytime you hit cancel, it, it it does not accept any of your changes. So if you ever are, do want to not accept the changes that you've made, cancel is the good way to do that. Or sometimes if you hit this X button, it'll also cancel it out. So if you want to make sure that you apply the changes, definitely hit that OK button. Um, that's just kind of a side note there. But uh, so I can change my layer color. So I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see that in layer one, all my text is green. And then, of course, when I select them, I, I still get my normal uh, blue for uh, closed contour and then red for the inside holes and whatnot. Um, I'm going to take this text here. I'm going to just hit Control X to cut that um, out of here. And I'm going to go over and I'm going to move to layer two. And I'm going to paste this. One thing to note, when you're moving between layers, um, and we're actually going to look at a move command here in a minute, but if you're copying and pasting things from one layer to the other, you must always use the paste active layer option. This is a crucial, non-negotiable thing that you need to do. Um, if you do paste, in fact, I'll just show you what paste does. If I do paste, it gives me this funky little dialog box or this little box here, and nothing appears. What's actually happened, if I go back to layer one, is it's actually placed the object right on top of the other object. So technically, there should be, oh, you know what? Here, I cut, so that's why it didn't. So if I do copy, Let's do that again. I'll, I'll do copy, go to layer two. We'll do this again and paste. Now, if I go back to layer one, I'm going to have two objects right on top of each other. So that's just a, a common mistake that can happen. Uh, just be aware that when you're copying and pasting from different layers, you do need to use that option. Otherwise, it'll start pasting a bunch of stuff on top of each other and you'll not know where your, your stuff has gone. So I'm going to do my cut again, and we're just going to go ahead and go to layer two and paste the active layer, and voila, this time it works. Um, the difference here is going to be that my text is now red. So my colors kind of came into effect there, and when I select the objects, again, we go back to our regular blue-red scheme that you're familiar with. This is helpful if you specifically like to work in a different color scheme. Obviously, there's a lot of guys out there that like to work in a color scheme that's black as a background, and they like to use white or gray or some other color like red or something to kind of get that contrast so it's not you're not looking at a white screen. This would be a good way to do that. Um, I'm going to go back, and I'm going to change these to black just because that's my preference. All right, 
So then we've got the other two options here. It, well, there's three more options that we're going to look at is the lock and the move lock. So they are slightly different. Uh, the move lock is interesting in that anything in that uh, anything in that layer with a move lock can be selected, but you just can't move it. So I can try and drag it around, but it doesn't it doesn't go anywhere. But it still allows me to select it. And not only that, I can still use my snap tools to snap to corners or uh, to different points. So I can still use the drawing as a point of anchoring or moving or something like that. Uh, very useful if you just don't want this to move. Because I know in en route, a lot of times you're selecting things and you're, you're trying to highlight objects. And it's very easy to select an object that you don't want and then accidentally move it. Uh, this will still allow you to use all your normal functions. In fact, I, I can even take this and I can still, I can even apply an outline to it. So it's somewhat functional in terms of you can still use the, the artwork to do other things in the software uh, that might need that artwork. The other one is a little bit different in terms of it will just, not allow you to do anything. So one thing to note, if you're in an active layer, so I'm in layer two right now, it's actually not going to allow me to lock that layer. I can only lock a layer that's not active or that I'm not currently on. So I'm going to go ahead and go over here and lock layer one that has that layer one text on it. Hit OK. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to just click on my all layers on or off. And the interesting thing is here is now layer two, I can select it. I, can, I can't move it, but layer one doesn't allow me to do anything. I can't select it. I can't click on it. I can't highlight it. I can't do anything to it. My snaps won't work. So if I try to snap something to a corner, none of that's available. So this is a more of a true lockdown. You can't do anything with it. No selections, nothing. So Depending on what you're doing, uh, this might be helpful for if you just don't want it to be selected at all while you're um, while you're drawing or copying something, or maybe you're tracing an object in the background and you just don't want it to be uh, selected at all. That might be helpful for that case. So let's go back to our layers. I'm going to turn off our move locks and locks. The last one here that I kind of want to just go over real quick is remove empty. And, and we're kind of going to go in some instances where this might be helpful. But when I click remove empty, it's going to remove all the empty layers that are in the drawing so that it kind of cleans up my workspace a little bit. Then that way, it reduces it down to the core essential layers that I have that actually have something inside of them. Um, This makes it a little bit nicer to clean up my workspace if I'm moving layers. This is really helpful if I'm doing nesting a lot. And let's take a look at what that kind of looks like. So I'm going to move these guys out here. I'm going to do a quick little nest. And I'm not going to worry too much about the settings. I'm just going to do it. Um, let's just say I want 85 of these. and Let's just let it go to town. So I'm going to turn off all layers because I have them on. You'll notice that they're kind of weird and all stacked together because I have all my layers turned on. I'm going to turn off all layers. And then I can see what it's done here for my nest. And I can see that now it's created two new layers. So I have my layer one, and my layer two, which are my text over here. And then I've got my nested one and nested two. Well, let's say I didn't like that. So I'm going to turn on all layers again. And I'm just going to highlight this and I'm going to delete it uh, just because I didn't like that nest. And let's just say I needed more copies. Um, I figure, well, since I'm since I'm doing all that work and I'm going to be using all that extra space, maybe I'll try doing 100 copies instead. And we'll just hit apply. And then again, if we look at our layers, you'll notice that we're starting to get more nested layers. Well, 
The nice thing is that if you do go back and forth between this nesting and deleting in the nest and renesting and then deleting the nest again, you're going to start to pile up layers. That's kind of why it's really nice to be able to just go in here and say, you know what, I've nested a bunch of times. Let's just get rid of these empty layers. Boom, it's all clean. Now I only have two layers that I have to deal with. And uh, that kind of makes it nice and easy. So that's kind of a nice and easy way to, to clean up your layers after you've been working for a while or you've been doing some nesting. Um, let's move these back into our plate. One other thing that we want to go to is there's another way to move objects from layer to layer besides just copy paste. Um, that's a nice way to do it, but if you prefer, there's also a different way. So what I can do is I can actually select an object so um, I'm going to turn off my layers for this. And I want to say, what if I want to move this text to layer two? Well, I could do the copy and then the paste if I really wanted to. But in this case, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say change layer. So the objects that I have selected they're currently in layer one, and that's what it's showing me here. And then over here on the right, uh, it's telling me what layers I can move it to. So if I click on layer two, and this is where it, it might also be handy to have colors. Um, right now, I just have them as black. If you had colors and they were a little bit easier to see, you might want to do it that way. So when I click on layer two, it's going to pop up over here that this is where the new location of that layer or that text is going to go to, it's layer two. I hit OK. And initially, it might not seem like it does anything, but if you just move your mouse, it redraws the screen, and now it moves it to another layer. So now I can go to layer two, and I've got both of my objects in this particular layer. So I can do vice versa. I can take this text, change, change layer. I'm in layer two. I'm going to send it to layer one. Hit OK. And then if I go back to layer one, layer, layer, the text is in there. So um, what are kind of some of the benefits of using this? This is all great and neat that we're talking about all this. And wh what are some of the benefits? Well, I have a file that's kind of laid out here that I want to show you. Um, I'm going to open that up. And this is just a cabinet part. Um, I pulled it off of one of our ATP sample files. Um, and it's got some interesting stuff in it. It's got uh, some drill holes. It's got a, an outside piece. It looks like it's got a dado here and here. Um, we've got some, some different parts here that hinges maybe and whatnot. Um, the nice thing about using layers, if you can do this, is that it makes things a lot easier in terms of selection. So in this case, if I didn't have any layers set up, my next step is going to be, oh, well, it's time to start applying tool paths. So now I start selecting the holes, and I quickly find out that I have to use this tedious method of selecting hey, holes. Yes. Sorry, can you go back a bit? The yes. box was blocking the right side of the screen um, when you were looking at oh. the menu over there. I moved it now. Oh, OK, you can just gotcha. Go over that option again. No problem. OK, so um, we imported this file here. Um, and if we didn't have layers, um, we would have to sit here and highlight all these things by hand. Um, so I'm just holding Shift as I do this. And I'm highlighting um, all these different holes. This can become very tedious and very difficult to do once you get files that are more complicated. Um, there's no point in having you sit here and do this if you can. In this case, what I've done is this particular file was actually saved as a layered document. Um, and when I imported it, it had all kinds of different stuff in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn off all my layers. And there happens to be nothing in layer one. but I'm going to go to cut to pass. And so now I can cycle through all the different layers, 
So there's main, there's the cut to pass, main, um, route back. There's the five millimeter holes. Uh, this layer would be for text, I believe. Usually zero is for text or something like that for marking. And then here's the five millimeter through holes. And then we're at the end of our file. The nice thing about this is that I can now very easily tool pass these options simply by clicking on the layer. And then I can hit control A to select all. Come over here and apply a five millimeter hole to my And just as quickly as that, I've got tool pass on that one. I can go to these holes. I could apply the same tool pass very quickly. And routes remembered the last settings that I used. Hit OK. Route back. Maybe I want to do an island fill on this. I can choose my bits here. So you can kind of see that this is going to be really quick, really easy to do, especially like if you have strategies or something like that saved already for some of these objects. It would just be a matter of clicking your strategy and then loading it up, and you're good. You're good. And let's do the main here. So we might do that same little island fill on, on these little guys, depending on what these are. Kind of just throwing some tool paths on here just for the sake of an example. Um, maybe we do an engrave on these because these are our dados. And maybe we use a quarter inch end mill for this. Again, like I said, I'm kind of just throwing stuff on here just for our example. And then maybe I use that same quarter inch end mill to do a routing offset to cut this part out at the very end. All right, so now we've got all these things toolpath. If I turn on all layers, now everything is complete. It's done. I was able to toolpath everything fairly quickly, and I didn't have to sit there and highlight a bunch of stuff. Now, in this particular example, yeah, this is kind of an easy example. There's one part. But imagine if you had like four or five of these parts, even if there's just a few like four or five, and that becomes a pain to have to sit there and try and highlight all the circles in those layers. If I duplicate this by, I'm, by doing this, by the way, I'm just dragging and holding the control key to duplicate. Um, if I duplicate this, those objects stay in their layers. So when I make multiple copies, if I decide to use my make, make multiple copies option where I can maybe make multiples or, or things like that, or if I'm nesting, um, those will kind of stay in their layers uh, as they're in their positions. So kind of a nice way, easy way to kind of manage tool pathing of different parts like this. Another advantage of using these layers is for, uh, for tool pathing's sake. So if we take a look at this file, let's pull up the Layers tab. So if I were to look at this, and, and maybe there's all kinds of ways to create output and how to organize your, your output in which order you might want it to go in. One of the ways that you can do that is when you go to the Output screen, you would change your tool order, or maybe your object. Maybe you would set strategy up here at the top. So there's different ways that you can do it. But one of the ways is by layer. So if I put layer at number one, then that means that the layer is going to be the primary method of cutting. I'm going to close this for a second. We're going to go back to our layers. So if I'm going to organize it by layers, I can say, well, I'd much rather my five millimeters go first. So I'm going to move these up. In fact, I'm actually going to hit remove empty. And that gets rid of a few. What is in, what's in layer one? Let's just take a look real quick. I'm curious. There's nothing, but I don't think it allows us to, to remove layer one uh, like that. So I'm just going to delete it. There we go. So I've got 
I'm going to move these guys up because I'm probably going to want to do my drills first. Uh, so let's move both of these guys up like this. And then maybe, let's see here, the route back in main. Let's take a look at those. So route back. Okay, so that's one of our things here. Main, that has our dados and stuff. So route back and main are probably going to be the next ones that I want to do. So I'm going to say main. Let's move it up a little bit. And maybe route back. We'll do that up here as well. And then this layer, I'm pretty sure, had nothing in it. So we'll delete it. Um, uh, and then our cut to pass. So cut to pass is our last layer because that's going to be our outside cut. and I can hit OK. So now if I were to preview this, let's just go simulate 2D, click order, and then I put layer is number one. I'm going to hit update order. I'm just going to hit play here. And what it should start doing is it should start doing the drills first. So this is kind of a, I'm not going to go through all these here, but uh, you can kind of get the idea this is what it's going to do. So we'll kind of go through the drills just to make sure it's doing what we want it to do. So it's going through here. And then we'll just make sure it goes through that last section. So now it's doing our next layer, which was here and here. So you can kind of see that this would be a nice way to output. So when I go to send this to my G code file, it's going to output in that order. So that's another good useful way to uh, use layers. Last example that I'm going to kind of use uh, for layers is when I'm doing 3D. Uh, I didn't get a chance to do a 3D file uh, to show, but a lot of times when you're doing 3D, you're dealing with um, reliefs that sometimes need to be placed in different places. And you might also have uh, different cuts. Um, that you want to apply to that relief, um, one of the things that can really help is that you'd want to avoid stacking tool paths. Stacking tool paths on top of each other is usually a never good idea, and that can happen very easily with 3D and things like that. So if I, I can create a quick example here. This is going to be a real simple one here. So let's just create a shape. And I'm just going to give it a beveled relief. We'll here, apply here. So if I look at this from the perspective view, I've got a, a file here. So let's say I want to cut this out. Well, I would probably apply an island fill to the center of this object. So I can do island fill. And we would probably use a ball end mill. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. And we'll just, uh, that's pretty deep. So we're going to apply this tool path. And then let's say, well, what if I need to cut it out? Well, theoretically, I could still select the same object and then just apply another tool path to it. So let's just say we're, this is at a one inch material. Let's say I need to cut it that far. Boom, it's done. Well, now the problem that I've created here is that what happens if I make a mistake and I have to go back and change the tool path, this tool path? Well, it becomes much more difficult for me now to go back and edit it because this tool path is on top of the other tool path. So it may not, in every circumstance, allow you to edit that toolpath properly. So now I have to delete everything and start all over. If you have multiple layers of toolpath stacked on top of each other, that can be very frustrating and difficult and time consuming. So what I would do in this particular case is let's say, well, let's just do this with layers. So I'm going to actually going to copy this to a new file. So I'm going to hit Control C. I'm just going to go to a blank file so that we can kind of reset our layers here. Paste to active layer. So what I'm going to do is layer one is going to be my 3D relief. I'm going to copy it, go in here, create a new layer. So layer one is going to be my 3D 
And then my layer two is going to be my cutout. Easy as that. Hit OK. I'm going to go up here and toggle my layers off to make sure that I'm in the cutout layer. I'm going to right click, paste to active layer. And then I'm, I'm actually just, I don't need this 3D relief anymore. All I really need is the outside shape. So I'm not just going to just delete the relief. So now I can apply my routing offset to my circle. And then I can go to my 3D. And since it's exactly in the same place, I can select it, do my island fill again. And then when I'm ready to actually ready to toolpath or send it out to the G code, I just turn on all layers. And now I've got all my toolpaths available to me. But if I make a mistake, it's super easy. All I have to do is turn off all layers, go back to the layer, like the cutout layer. And now I can edit this toolpath freely. And I don't have to worry about affecting any other part of the job. You can use this with 3D. You can use this if you're stacking toolpaths on top of each other or making custom parts that have different layers of toolpathing. This is a much easier way to help keep those things organized so that if you do have to go back and change something, even let's say like if it's a feed rate, so all you need to do is change a feed rate. It would be a bummer if you'd have to delete five layers worth of toolpathing just to change a feed rate from, you know, F180 to F120 or something like that, that would be a bummer. So you can use layers to kind of keep those things organized so that when you go back and retool path things, it's all easily accessible and, uh, and not a pain to get back to. So that's basically layers in a nutshell. It's about 30 minutes or so. Um, so I think we'll call it there, but uh, layers, super useful, keeping your job organized, helping you select objects, keeping them tool path, outputting a bunch of different things that are useful there. Excellent. What do we got for questions? Thank you, Aaron. Actually, we just had one come up. Uh, Fredo said, when you set your surface and max depth and the layers go into the order you want it, the order you want it to while it switches through tools, does it keep the same surface and depth? Yeah, so all your layers uh, maintain the same uh, depth and things when you copy things over. So for example, every one of these layers is going to be um, the same material thickness, height and width, that's, that's gonna be the same. If I copy this object here from uh, its location and it has a, um, a depth of one inch, when I paste it to another layer, it keeps that depth. Uh, it also keeps the positioning. So let's say if I had moved this using the precision input center, let's say I had moved the actual geometry to a, a lower position, uh, say to halfway down the material. When I copy and paste it, it keeps the position, uh, not only in the X and Y, but also in the Z. Um, same thing with 3D relief. If I have a, a 3D relief that I've lowered into the material and I copy and paste it to a different layer, it will maintain its depth in the Z and everything as well. So everything about that object is saved when you copy and paste using that paste to active, active layer option. Okay, perfect. All right, do we have any other questions uh, either about using layers in the NRoute or any other questions that you may have had? Uh, oh, John said off topic, how do I clear out my strategies? Good question. This one kind of seems a little counterintuitive, so I don't blame you for uh, not knowing right offhand. Um, if I say go into my island fill and um, like I said, a little counterintuitive, you will hit save as. And then you'll select a template from here and hit this delete button. Um, hmm. Let's see if I let's see if I have a strategy safe somewhere. I might. Ah, here we go. So I've got a strategy here. If I hit save as, I can then select the strategy and delete it. It'll ask me if I want to. Yes, and now it's gone. So you can easily clear out your strategies that way. If uh, 
if you're of the notion where you just want to get rid of all your strategies and you just you want to clean out everything, you could theoretically go into the C drive and just delete the strategies folder in the end route and that will delete all of them. But that may not be what you're doing. But um, if you have a ton of strategies and you don't want to say you have 50 strategies and you don't want to click 50 times, I can understand that. You could just go into the C drive under en route and just delete the strategies file and that will essentially clear out your strategies too. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I don't see any other current questions. Uh, so if you if you folks have any other questions, go ahead and type them in. Or if you have any other topics that you'd like to see us cover more in depth on one of these webinars, uh, just let us know. You can also type those into the chat window or send us an email. I want to make sure that these are useful and valuable to you. Uh, so if you do have any suggestions for future topics, feel free to let us know. Okay, we do have some questions or some comments. Uh, appling bitmaps. Ah, so applying. Uh, applying. Apl there applying bitmaps, yeah. Um, yes, uh, so applying bitmaps is a good one. Um, there, I think we have, uh, shoot, I don't remember if what the day is that we have. Uh, we do have in November a webinar on vectorizing mm -hmm. in en route, um, but uh, we don't have anything necessarily on applying. You can apply a bitmap to a relief, and this is where it, it, it gets a little bit tricky, but I'll kind of give you the quick rundown, and then maybe if you want to give us a call or something, you can. Um, but that would be a good, actually, a good topic for a webinar. Um, but you would apply a relief to an object, say the uh, square, circle, whatever it is, you would import a bitmap. You would put the bitmap on top of your relief, select both objects, and there's a little tool up here, and I don't remember where it's at. I think it's this one. It says, uh, no, that's not it. Um, here we go, it's this one right here. Apply bitmap to relief. Uh, and that will apply the bitmap to the relief that you could then later cut. I think we have some videos on our YouTube channel on this one as well. If you're if you're curious about it, um, but yeah, that that actually might not be a bad webinar topic for the future for sure. I'll have Excellent. to add that yeah. to our list. We've got the next two planned, but then we can add it for webinar starting next year. Um, so we have another question from Scott. He said, "Once again, off topic. I'm having trouble ordering my cuts in manual mode." Ah, the good old-fashioned manual mode. So um, there can be several things going on here, but um, if you have multiple cuts, uh, it's kind of important the order that you do things in. Um, the manual ordering can be a little bit quirky. So um, if I have several options shapes here and I click on my manual ordering, it should bring up uh, objects now it's going to do this in this order. I can start clicking on objects and changing the order so I can hit my down arrows and whatnot to kind of change that order. Grouping, if I group objects together, that also affects the ordering of the objects as well. So make sure that things are ungrouped when you do it. Um, and then if you choose manual uh, and you decide to uh, do it this way, then when you set the ordering and you finish clicking on everything, you pretty much have to go to output right away. So you must hit OK and then go straight to output. And if you look under object order, all of these options should be unchecked. If you get to the object order and one of them is checked, then, then that means that it's lost the it's lost the data or something and it's it is no longer doing the manual ordering. So that's kind of why it's important to go directly to it. So then I would set my object as number one in my priority. And um, this should still should be unchecked. And then hit to file. There's all kinds of other things that could be happening there. Um, but that's kind of the rundown. You do need to just go directly from ordering 
to toolpathing. If you make any changes, like if you draw something new on screen, if you move something around, that can affect how this box gets checked or unchecked. So it's kind of one of those, those quirky things where you go right from ordering immediately to output and then make sure that that box is unchecked and it should output in the correct order. Uh, there's a question here on using entry exit options. Uh, that's a good one, actually. Um, I think that would be a good topic for a webinar because that has some fairly in-depth options in it. Um, the list. And then how do you do grouping? Grouping um, is selecting a series of objects. And you could do it by using Control G. That groups an objects together. So no, so no matter which one I click on now, it always selects the group. Um, and then Control U ungroups the objects. I think you can also find it under the Transform menu. Yeah, they're right here. Um, you can use grouping to uh, group a part together. So here's a good example of what, why you might want to group something together. Uh, if you're nesting something and a part has multiple components to it, you would definitely want to group those items together before you nested. Because when you nest, if you don't have your objects grouped together, it'll fling all the pieces into separate places and it'll kind of tear apart your, your part. So just that's one way to use grouping. Um, right, so John clarified, uh, he's also wondering about grouping as related to the output order. Ah, that's another one. OK, so grouping. Uh, so what you can what can happen is I believe that if I have, say, say if I group these two objects and I hit my toolpath order, notice how when I, I look at it now, it skipped this one. It's not that it skipped it. It's just that this, these two circles are tied together. So when it does three, it's actually doing both of these. So you can use that to your advantage when, when, when ordering things. So if I have a part that has multiple pieces to it, and I'd rather it finish that part before I move on, you can tell it to do the maintain part grouping. And so when you output, you'll notice you see this maintain grouping checkbox. 90% of the time it's checked. But what that does is if I were to uncheck this and I had these two circles grouped, it would it would disregard that grouping and it wouldn't hold those pieces together. Um, when I have it checked, that means that anything that's grouped together, those objects will be accomplished first before it moves on to something else. So that's how you can use it to complete a part, an entire part, then move on to the next one, then move on to the next one so it doesn't fly around the, the part doing different sections. Depending on how your vacuum table is set up and whatnot, you may want to do that instead. Have it do a part, a part, a part, a part before it moves on instead of cutting all of one pass and then another pass. Um, hopefully that helps. Uh, Alfredo said, how about bridges? Bridges. Um, bridges are an interesting topic. Um, you can you can add bridges to any object later on. So if I have my circle here, I need to select it, go to tool path, edit bridges. And if I click on that tool path, or hold on here, did I, I think I might have. Oh, here we go. This is a little tricky. I don't. This is why I don't particularly like doing it this way. But this is one of the ways you can do it. You can hit Edit Bridges, and then if you you get this cursor here, and if you right click, you can say Insert Bridges. It's a little bit tedious, and now you get this little bridges icon, and I can start inserting bridges, um, and it uses a default value to in to to create those. So I don't particularly like how they get formed. They use a default value. I don't have as much control over it. So what I do is I go and I edit bridges under the toolpath. So in our routing offset, 
if you come down here to the bottom, there's an option that says with bridges. And here I can define what kind of bridge I want. And if you look these up in the uh, the Enroute manual, it'll show you what these are and kind of what they look like. Uh, and then you can define how long, how high, and you can define how many you want. If you want it to have four per part, or if you want to do it by distance, or that, again, the manual way I think is a little bit too manual, but it can be done. If I click on this option, it'll give me a special cursor where I can start clicking on the parts to add bridges. But I can say by number, and say I want five, click OK. And now this part has one, two, three, four, five bridges on it on the exact specifications that I gave it. Thank you, Aaron. I think that's about all the time we have for questions today. But thank you for covering all those. And uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, bringing those questions. And we will be having our next webinar on October 15th. There we are, where we'll be covering uh, how to use the point editing tools. So once again, that'll be October 15th, Tuesday. And we will be sending out an email uh, reminder just like this one. And we've got those suggestions for future webinars, so we appreciate those. We want to make sure that uh, we're covering things that will will help you with Enroute. Uh, let's see. Scott says, any tricks that are only for Plasma? Uh, let me jot that down, Scott. We'll see if we can cover that in the next, in the next webinar. We can do that in the Q&A session. Uh, but once again, just want to say thank you to Aaron for putting on this webinar and answering all those questions. And we'll see you folks next month.